I want to start with your views on AI. You've taken some time to look at this and build on this. Talk to me about your views on the AI ecosystem today. Yeah. So the way I kind of, like I said, right, it's like you solve problems by writing code, right? It's like 70% solution and just start continue operating and moving in that direction, right? Is that I kind of approach it the same way that I approach when people kind of have doubts about Bitcoin, right? It's like you sort of chuckle to yourself and you plug in more ASICs and you write more code, right? And like when it comes to the AI aspect of it is that this stuff is open source now. There are sufficient numbers of people working on this. This train is not going to stop, right? We're going like next year, there's going to be open source models, which are just as good as GPT-4, right? Is that this train is not going to stop. So skate where the puck is going, right? And see if we can kind of like go in that direction instead of like having negotiations about where the puck currently is, right? So that's kind of like mm -hmm. the general framework that I apply for this thing. So how does, how does I like from working on the Bitcoin development side, how do I arrive at AI, right? So part of it was that basically Replit, which was uh, my code editor of choice and like where I've been kind of doing this stuff, they did like a big focus on AI. And so I was like, okay, now I should start paying attention to this, right? But the way that I kind of think about it, right, is that a lot of the stuff that we do in Bitcoin, especially on the lightning development side, is like when you're building for like the Western world is that a lot of the stuff can feel kind of gimmicky, right? And it's not like because it's not that it is gimmicky, right? But it's just like, hey, I could do this with dollars. I'm choosing to do it with Bitcoin. There's like certain things where it's like clearly Bitcoin like makes more sense than dollars, right? So like cross-border remittances and um, like, like streaming for streaming sats for payments and like doing uh, for podcasts or doing like zaps and those kinds of things. But it's like, yeah, theoretically, you could also do this with dollars. AI is one of those things where there's absolutely no better solution anywhere in the world than Bitcoin. And they have not solved their monetization problems for it. And so what does that mean, right? Like we've moved into this computing paradigm now with AI where you can think about API calls. So like when I go to a website and I start using the AI, that's no longer basically free, right? Is that beforehand, you could kind of amortize those costs, like the energy costs that you were expending across all of your user base, right? And so it's like, yeah, sure, 90% of my users don't pay, they use the free version, but they're monetized by the fact that I get those 10%, right, who pay me a lot of money, okay? Mm -hmm. But the problem becomes now is that you can think about every single time that I do a GPT-4 or like some sort of more advanced model cost uh, model call, as like every time I send that payment, I'm setting a graphics card on fire, right? Like estimates for GPT-4 car calls are somewhere between like $0.03 cents and $0.08 cents per, uh, per call that you do right? Sorry, for, um, per conversation that you have, right? It's like, you can't just mm -hmm. open this stuff up to um, infinite number of people. And so we're in this new computing paradigm. And you, when you think about it at first, people currently, they're trying to use like Stripe for it, right? But it's like, okay, well, now you've just limited your market to basically exclusively Western developers for um, normally people who are going to be using computers or whatever, right? Like skate where the puck is going on this stuff, where you've got millions of developers who are going to be coming from uh, the rest of the world. They're primarily going to be coming from mobile. They're also not going to have access to dollars, right? is like, what's a mechanism that you can use to allow them to build, to allow them to use your service as well, right? And this is where Bitcoin comes in, especially like the L402 standard, right? So L, so I, I, you've talked about this before in your podcast, but just a summary in case people haven't heard of it, is that 402 is a reserved status code in the HTTP specification, right? Is that normally when you hit a web page and it doesn't exist, it'll come back with 404 not found, right? There's a 404, 402 payment required error, right? That's a standardized part of the web. So L402 is that, hey, when I send back this 402 payment required, right, of saying like, oh, hey, you have to pay for this resource, I pass a lightning invoice with that, right? And then the response is that you've paid the lightning invoice and you provide the proof of payment, right? And so all of a sudden, you, this, open, this is like a clear match for lightning, right, of that like when you're hitting an API endpoint and the API endpoint is going to cost like three to five cents or three to eight cents, like basically regardless of who uses it and when. You have to pass that cost along to the user, right? And there's no better solution for that than Lightning, especially because Lightning has this invoicing system which allows you to do a proof of payment, right? And it doesn't get in the way of the user uh, flow, right? So I've been building a bunch of like chatbots and those kinds of things, right, that use Lightning on the back end. I'm getting paid in real time and it's not getting in the way of the user experience, right? Because it's a live Lightning payment um, at like, yeah. So that's kind of like the first part, right? Of that, like you have to be able to pass these costs along to the user. And then you see some of the development in agents, right? And so basically you can think about AI, like the big generative AI push that everyone's been doing right now is based off large language models, right? And so for that one is it's like trained on like the entire compendium of human knowledge tokenized and like represented as text. Basically from being trained on that, it can generate just using like prediction what the next um, 
parts of the text should be, right? So it's like based off of the entire compendium of human knowledge and some specific context that I give it. And then I ask a question, what is the most likely next token? So ne next word or next like couple letters or whatever to do that. And it becomes really, really effective, right? <laughs> that basically you can have it speak to you, right? And it's very, very smart in the way that it does these things, right? So now the question becomes, okay, well, if we have multiples of these language models and we're having them output into each other, right? Well, now we can basically have something that acts as an autonomous agent, right? And so like, for example, the first pass that it can do when you ask it for something is it can split that task up into subtasks and then assign those to different things and say, oh, hey, the best way to solve this would be to use this code specific language model, right? And then feed that task into that one. And then it would say, oh, well, he's also asking about like, I don't know, like using Expedia or something, right? So it's like Expedia has been running a model and they have like specific context that's available to them. I'll use that one. And so you have like basically the first part of the large language model is like the, like exec, uh, like the scheduler, right? That kind of splits up the tasks and then it gives those off to other things. Well, now this is another place where clearly lightning is like a perfect use case for this, right? Of that you basically give these agents that you're spawning lightning in wallets, right? And so it can purchase access to resources and stuff as it's working for you, right? And this is like, even bigger brain off of this stuff. And this is like kind of like the thing that really gets me excited about this stuff is that you can also train the large language models that you're using to kind of recognize their limitations or even just explicitly tell them though by passing them in the context window, right? So basically you can be interacting with one of these models or you can be interacting with an agent and as part of the context that you're feeding into it, right? You can say, tell it what its capabilities and limitations are. And if you ask it for something that it can't do, it can use the Bitcoin that you gave it to get a human to do that part of the task that it wasn't able to do, right? And then feed it back into itself and continue operating, right? So these are just a couple ideas that like really got me excited about um, like the applications for this. And all of these things cost money, right? Because in order to do like the best, most cutting edge stuff, it requires a lot of electricity, right? It, so like basically right. setting a graphics model on fire every time you uh, do any of these things, right? And the best way to do that is to pass the cost along to the user at run like at the time that they're doing it, not try to amortize it across everything else. Every single person building on AI is running into exactly this problem and Bitcoin fixes this.